We bring in uh, ESPN College basketball analyst Jimmy Dykes with us now here on the program. Jimmy, it's good to talk to you. How are you? Hey, guys, I'm doing great, man. What a beautiful day in Arkansas. Isn't it crazy? Yeah. Yeah, it's just, man, it's just one of those perfect spring afternoons. And I know you guys are rolling right now with the talk radio show and this host with men's and women's basketball, baseball, and gymnastics, you, you name it, Arkansas is rolling right now. So I know you guys have a good time with your job. Yeah, there's a, there's a lot to uh, discuss. And um, one of the things I wanted to talk to you about is – because you have a, a little bit of a broader feel on college basketball than than certainly Zach and I do, and because we're usually as focused on Arkansas. So when you look at Arkansas and you look at potentially where they could stack up in the in an NCAA tournament, wh- what's the ceiling here for this group? Yeah, that's a great question. I mean, I, I've had Arkansas four or five times. This year. I had them at their worst. Like I had them when they got. They, they got it handed to them back in early January in conference play, and most wasn't happy about anything. And there was a lot of question marks about that team. But man, have they been good over the past four or five weeks, as you guys know? And not only are they the hottest team in the SEC, they're arguably you know one of the hottest teams in the country. So when I look at them, I was on a couple of radio shows this morning. Uh, that in California asked me about. I, was, I did a Pac-12 game on Monday night, and. and I was asking about that league compared to other leagues. And, like, I look at Arkansas, like, they would win the Pac-12. Like, they're they're that good. I did the Oregon-Arizona game on Monday night. Oregon's probably going to win that league. Just breaking down Oregon for a couple of days and comparing them to Arkansas, like, I just think Arkansas is a better team overall. So, I, I don't know if Arkansas is a Final Four team, but I, I can't tell you that they're not. And the reason why I say that, there's, I believe – 17 out of the 18 past national champions going into the NCAA tournament, they were inside the top 40, both offensive and defensive efficiency numbers. Well, Arkansas is one of 17 teams in the country right now that are in the top 40 of both. And I, that's, that's a pretty good, if I just take a broad look at college ball, those numbers are pretty true to me over the years. And that would equate, I think, Arkansas is a, uh, absolutely a second-round team, which gets you in the Sweet 16. I think, they're, I think they can beat any, about most teams out there in that Sweet 16 game. Now you're in that Elite Eight. I, I don't think that's out of all the room possibly for Arkansas this year. Are they as good uh, as Michigan, Baylor, Gonzaga, Illinois? Probably not in a series. Probably not. But they're, they're about as good as anybody else out there that I didn't just name. You mentioned you had them at their lowest point. That was those back-to-back losses, Alabama, LSU. You watch this as critically as anybody. You mentioned you've had them four or five times. What is the difference in eight weeks from where they're at their lowest point? We're wondering, is this going to work this year, to now we're sitting here going, could they, if they run the table here, win the SEC tournament, they're probably on the two line. Yeah, I, I think they got a real chance to get there. And I've I got seven or eight games next week in the SEC tournament. I'll be there watching to try to do it, but I remember talking to Eric uh, Musselman like the next day after those back-to-back losses, and he was he was really direct with his guys about shot selection. What is a good shot? What is a bad shot? He told me it was one of the first times in his coaching career that he's had to have that conversation because he wants his kids to play with a lot of freedom. I love that about his system. But from that point on, man, they I think he got their attention. Uh, he set some guys down, and he, he, he it was very clear how this year's team is supposed to play. And, and they, when, they, when that team bought into that, and, and what happens is when you get that kind of buy-in, guys, collectively, the entire collective confidence also raises up. Bill Self told me the same thing has happened to his team this year over the last three weeks. And, you know, getting Justin back is a big deal. Moses Moody is as good of a freshman that we have in the country outside of, Kate Cunningham and Evan Mobley in terms of how they've produced. I'm not saying how he's going to reject as a pro, but uh, I guess the last thing I would say is that it's a very, very unselfish basketball team. And for Mus to take transfers and four stud freshmen from Arkansas, blend them all together in a four or five month time to play the selfless brand of ball that, that they play. Nate Oates is probably going to be the coach of the year in the league because they won it. But, man, uh, you could make a strong case for Eric Musselman as well. We're talking with ESPN's Jimmy Dykes here on Ruskin and Zach. And, um, yeah, I mean, 
one of the things that, that we we've known that you know Musselman's got this team that they're they're bought in. There's no doubt about it. But one of the things, if you were still wondering, was the way that they went to South Carolina after because they talked about this revenge tour, uh, Jimmy, with the LSU and Alabama games, and then that would have been prime spot for a letdown. And they go yeah. and just blow out a, a South Carolina team on the road after that. Yeah, I, I was. I had my eye on that team, and I I, I wasn't doing it. But I, I thought the same thing because I've seen South Carolina make it really hard on teams before. I think that speaks to the maturity of that team. I'm a you guys have heard me. I did that revenge tour thing, but I'm a big, big, huge fan of Devo Davis. Yeah, and I'm a huge fan of Jalen Tate. I, I think Jalen Tate has a a little bit of a nastiness about him. Um, kind of like the two guards I played with in college, Alvin Robertson and Daryl Walker. Like, you have to have a guy that at some point just says, we ain't, we ain't walking off this floor without a win. I think Jalen Tate is that for Arkansas right now. I got, you know, I saw him get into uh, to Petty in that ball game in, 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 the, in the right way. Like, you cannot back down from Alabama. They will punk you if you do. And Arkansas would have no part of it that night, so... The best thing about Arkansas is that they're they're hot, they're healthy, and they're hungry. And man, you, you look for those teams in March every single year to, to, to do a lot of damage. What is it about Eric Musselman? I, I think as fans, we all kind of—I mean, he does all the social media stuff. But from like an X's and O's standpoint, I mean, Nolan could motivate. Nolan had a system. Is it—is it the X's and O's? Is it the way that he sells the program? Is it just general enthusiasm? What is it about this guy that a will draw top talent, and then when they get out there and they get this thing right, I mean, it looks really easy at times. Yeah. You know, one of the cool things about my job, and I've, I don't know, I've been over 1,500 games over the last 20 plus years with ESPN, is that equates to a minimum of 3,000 practices that I get to go in and watch either the day before or the day of. And, and, and Muss's practice, the day of the game, is as good as I've ever seen. And I've been to NBA practices, uh, I've been to the you know, I've done I've done Duke, North Carolina, Kansas, Calipari. Keep on going down the list. The way he frames it for his guys, the way he demands attention to detail, the information that they break down as a staff and how they present it is, I think, at a different level. And I, I've seen them all, and I think they bring their scouting report to the team better than anybody else in this league. I, and other coaches, I talk to coaches in this league all the time. They're they're all friends of mine. I, I have great relationships with them. Uh, a lot of the stuff that I say on the air is straight from a coach. I don't think fans realize that. I might be critical of a player because the coach said, hey, m- make a point on this kid tonight for me. But coaches will tell you in this league that Arkansas brings the scouting report to the game as well as anybody. And that's all about coaching. That's all about communicating. That's all about making it simple and sound and, and kids able to grasp it and use it. We're talking with uh, Jimmy Dykes from ESPN here on Ruskin and Zach. I'm glad you brought up, uh, you know, uh, the broadcasting side of it. Man, we, we, Zach and I have said this uh, for weeks, so this isn't just, uh, you know, kiss up to the guest time here for us. But we've said this for <laughs> weeks, that you are so unfairly criticized by the fans in this state. It's really uh, being, ridiculous. Being someone who's who is, who's uh, been a part of this state and when – Going back to the ARSN games with, with Paul Eels in the 90s, uh, all the way through, uh, the way that people uh, attack you sometimes just doesn't make any sense to I, I, I mean, you, you're a terrific college basketball analyst on television. You really are, and it's just it, it, it baffles me sometimes that some of the crap that you catch. <laughs> well, thanks for catching it for me. I, <laughs> I, 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 uh, you know, I can live anywhere in the state, anywhere in the United States for ESPN. I, I, I love Arkansas. This is always going to be my home. And, uh, I, I, there's a couple of things there. I, I, I pay no attention to criticism, and here's why. I, I think it's a great rule to live by. You never accept criticism from someone that you also don't go to for advice. And there's five or six people, five or six guys in my life that I go to for advice when I really need it. And none of those five or six are on social media, so I, don't, <laughs> I know it's not them criticizing me, so... You know, when I do a ball game, and I, I've talked with Dan Dockett, Jay Billis, Frank Schilla, Nick Vital, we have all said the same thing to one another. We know we've done our job when at the game both fan bases are hacked off at us. <laughs> because right. that means we've been, we've been authentic, we've been real, we've been honest with our analysis of both teams. 
And I, that, that's why I just, you know, I, I, I never, every once in a while I will glance at social media. Like if I'm on an airplane ride home from a game, I need something to do. Like I might scroll through and just for entertainment purposes, <laughs> if nothing else. But I, I would tell you that because I think both you guys announced as well, I believe, uh, high school games. Mm-hmm. And, mm-hmm. And, and anytime you're out there in a spot like that, I, I also never let the highest praise that I get, that I get leaked on me sometimes. Because I see that. I see at times people say, you are the best analyst in all of college basketball. I also see the lowest of lows from people that, that attack personally. Uh, and But I never let either one of those highs or lows get into my heart and affect how I do my game or affect who I am as a person. Because that's not at all what I want to be. That That's poison to your system when you let those highs get into your heart or the lows. So, you know, I, I, I never let criticism... Fans affect how I do a job. I answer to, first of all, I'll just be blunt honest with you. I answer to my Heavenly Father and how I do my job, how I go about it, how I work, is, is my heart pure in this game, all those things. I answer to our coordinating producer in Bristol, in, in Bristol, Connecticut. I answer to our game producer. And probably fourth in line is that is the coaches. You know, if the coaches call me and they have a, 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 a point to bring up with me, um, and that happened. Maybe once every couple of years, I might hear from a coach that says, hey, I, I don't really appreciate how you said this. Then we'll, we, we will talk that out. And I've had that conversation, like I said, once, maybe 10 times in 20 years. Because uh, I want a coach, when they get done watching my game, to say, you know what? He was prepared. He knows the game. He uh, he, he broke the game down. He was honest with, with the pluses and the minuses of our team. And one of the greatest compliments I can get after a game is for a coach to call me the next day and say, I took what you said about our team, about player X, Y, Z, and played it from front of our guys and said, see, he's saying the same thing I'm trying to tell you. That's probably the greatest compliment I can get from a job. And that's the that's the one compliment that I do pay attention to. People will watch games and they're, oh, the announcers hate Arkansas. And you just kind of roll your eyes. And But, I mean, there are three things. I mean, Ruskin and I, we, we do high school games. Three things you want out of a game. Number one, you want the equipment to work. That's a big deal. Yeah. Two, yeah. two you want these days, yeah, right? yeah, exactly. right. yeah. you want the, you want a competitive game. And three, your check to clear. That's it. That's all you're looking for is just give me, give me a competitive game because blowouts suck. If they're, they're impossible to do. Those they're are the only thing. You don't go into a game if you're doing, I don't know, if you're doing UNC and Duke. You don't go in with an anti-Duke agenda. No. No. No, it, no you never did. Like, I obviously, I played at Arkansas, coached at Arkansas with Eddie Sutton, was a women's coach there, met my wife, and asked her to marry me at midcourt on the hog. Like, I'm, I'm a Razorback through and through. I can just tell you, the four or five times a game I do a year for, uh, and Arkansas is involved, it's just a neutral broadcast. I, I prefer for Arkansas just like I do the other team. I see the game through the eyes of Arkansas, just like I see the other team. Because if I don't, I'm not working for ESPN for 23 years, mm-hmm. and that's that's not my goal. I, I love my job. It's been above and beyond a blessing in my life, just the from financially to all the places I've gotten to go, all the relationships I've built. But you are exactly right. Like my my next game is uh, it's not a great game. It's Saturday, Kentucky and South Carolina, and then Sunday I have the last team in the ACC play. Florida, Tennessee. All, all I want is a close game. Mm-hmm. That's all I want. Uh, because then, man, we can we can stay in that game and all that. When the game gets away from us, as you guys know, uh, our, our games are aired across the entire nation. Like, when it gets to a 12, 14-point game, we have to start talking about some other stuff and try to keep those views engaged and not just talk about so-and-so made a layup now it's an 18-point game. Who cares? Oh. At that point, it doesn't matter that, that somebody scored and it's an 18-point game. Tell me what I need to know about the NCAA tournament. Tell me who's a player of the year. Tell me, and people, you know, and, and it's not their fault, but they don't understand that part of TV like you guys do. So, yeah, um, I, I, I love my job, but yeah, I, I, I've got to stay neutral. I've got to stay neutral. I, I've got a uh, Jimmy. I've got a, a process question during a game because sometimes this will happen during a game. One team is, uh, you know, in in one of these segments between TV timeouts, they'll be more attention on the team that's leading the game. Then you come back from a break, and you'll talk about how the other team has to get back in this ballgame. How does that conversation during the game, I know everybody has a plan before the game, what we want to talk about, but during the game, 
How does that communication work on how to move the conversation along? Yeah, that's the that's a, that's a joint effort between me, the play by play guy. Normally, it's been Carl Ravitch with me in SEC play, and our actual game producer. And normally, when we're in that two minute break, the, the first question the producer says is, "Where where do we need to go now?" You know, and if it, if it's close game, then obviously we're talking about the game, and and I get into the uh, this is what this is what LSU needs to do right now. They're down eight at Arkansas. And I might spend the next couple of possessions talking about LSU, LSU. Well, some fans think, oh, he's going for LSU. No, I'm just saying <laughs> this is what right. LSU needs to do. I don't care who wins. I'm just saying LSU needs back-to-back stops. And if LSU continues to drive the ball because they're in the double bonus, they got a chance to cut into this lead. Oh, well, he's going for LSU. No, I'm just telling you what needs to be going on in this game. But that's a that is a constant conversation. Even during the game, I have a talkback switch that I can talk to the producer, and no one hears me, hears it other than the producer. Or I can talk to uh, Carl Ravitch, who's calling the game in Bristol, Connecticut these days. And only he and I hear that conversation. It's not going over the air. So I might say something like, hey, Ravi, ask me about uh, uh, Moses Moody. He has now missed his last six. Boom. Within 15 seconds, Jimmy moves the movie over. Such what's going on there? So it's just a constant, constant conversation, communication, and the people I work with at ESPN, from Dave Pash to Carl Ravish to John Shambi, to just keep on going down the line. Jason Benetti, Dan Schulman, they are pro, pro of all pros at their job, and they make our job as an analyst there really easy. How difficult is it to do the games remotely? Basketball is one of those sports where you're. Uh, being in the building seems to be really, really important, and, and in this world, you can't do that. You know, it's been a challenge. It's been, it's been a real challenge because what I see. Uh, excuse me, hold on a second. I got it. That, that producer for Saturday calling. Nope, can't talk. I'm on with Russell and Zach. You can to wait. <laughs> That's right. That's right. <laughs> uh, what, what I see, guys, this year is what you're seeing at home. The, the, I, I'm seeing it about 30 seconds before you are. The difference is you're seeing it much clearer than I am. When I go back and watch the game on TV, and I, I go back and watch every every film that I do, that's that's where you learn. Man, those are hard things to watch. It's like breaking down a game film with your team. It's hard to watch because you see, I wish I would have said this differently. I missed that. How did I not see that? But yeah, I don't think they'll realize this year we're watching the game off of a Zoom feed. And when's the last time you were on a crystal clear Zoom feed? There's not one out there. <laughs> right, yeah. And so there are there are times where it's hard it's hard for me to see um like who was the foul on? Like who like what was that a foul? Was that not a foul? And it's I think we've done some a phenomenal job this year with the challenges we've had from the ESPN with our technology. But that's just to give you a little bit of behind the scenes of what we've dealt with this year. Okay. Well, we'll let you uh, return that phone call, uh, Jimmy, because we're just about oh, out, out of wait, time. Man. Well, we're just about out of time ourselves here, so uh, we'll let you run. But thanks so much uh, for the time today. We really appreciate it. Yeah, you guys are great. Thanks for having me on. All right. Jimmy Dykes, ESPN, with us here on Ruskin and Zach. I hope he doesn't get in trouble for that. That could be bad. <laughs> I don't want to put well, calls ig- on him. Ignoring the, uh, the producer uh, to talk to uh, – us too. So, all right, there you go. There's Jimmy Dykes. He does not care if your team wins or loses. So let's put this to bed and move on Please. with our lives. Thank you. Okay. Our Hogville will be a flutter this <laughs> afternoon. Right. Exactly. Jimmy hates us. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> all right. Uh, we will uh, come back here in a little while and uh, we'll get the uh, SEC report in there. That was good. That was a little basketball and a little television. How the sausage is made a the, little bit. The grown ups were texting in how they have newfound respect for Jimmy and what he does. Yes. And, it's it's pretty good. I mean, he is he goes yeah. out of his way and like like I mean he, he even laughed, but he, I mean it, it's right. All you care about when you show up to do a game every every time I walk into a gym, does the equipment work? That's right. Give that's me a close right. game. That's right. And for the love of God, make my check clear. Do we have a crew? Yeah, yeah. That's we have right. a crew. We have a crew. He doesn't have to worry about that. We have to worry about. That. Make sure my check clears. <laughs> no, and, yeah, and I'll do whatever you want. Yeah. Well, there was a game where. Um, Carl Ravage's equipment didn't work, and uh, it was all Jimmy for a little yep. while. And then they got Carl on the phone D- for don't a Don't let while. The, the thing he said where you're watching it on a Zoom and it's not exactly clear, don't let go of that. Yeah. Those of you that want to go, he missed the call! Oh, that's right. Yeah. 
Sometimes, Sometimes you that's speak. a good heckle for the crowd, though. Yes. If you're in the building, what are you watching the game on Zoom? <laughs> that's a good heckle. We'll give you that one free of charge if you're in the building on Saturday. All right, SEC report headed your way next. Russ, get inside. Love getting more. More savings with a coupon. More guacamole with your tacos. And more bang for your buck. And with the X tickets from the Arkansas Scholarship Lottery, not only do you have a chance to win, you also get a chance to multiply that prize from two to 200 times with top prizes from $5,000 to $500,000. So don't settle for just a win. Win more with an X ticket today. Call 1 800 522 4700 for problem gambling helpline. Um, Meditating, Brother Robert? Quiet the mind and the soul will speak, Brother Will. Yeah, but in stretchy pants? Jeans are too stressful. Well, same's true with a leaky roof. Relax. Brown Boy's roofs are stress-free. Our 20-year no-leak guarantee will calm the soul. You'll live a more peaceful life. And unlock the mysteries of the universe. At brownboysroofing.com um, Namaste, Brother Will. Namaste, Brother Robert. The Odd Soul on Emma. In-